Victor, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it. We're continuing the conversation around intra-African trade, and that obviously is, is very important considering where we're headed with the African uh, Continental Free Trade Agreement as well, which is uh, very, very important. The UN sort of estimates that if we open up, open ourselves up to more intra-African trade, we could really raise how much we, we, we trade with each other by at least 50%. How, how significant and how important is that really for a continent that needs the growth and, and needs the help of just each other? I think it's very significant. Uh, so good morning, Garibile, and uh, welcome to you and all of your listeners. I think it's very important uh, that we see that increase in economic activity which inter-African trade would bring to the continent. Um, I think there are, at this point, varying estimates about how large that impact is going to be, but there's no doubt that it will be significant. Um, and some of it will come through a reduction in tariff barriers, and a potentially an even larger unlock would be a reduction in or an easing of non-tariff barriers in terms of driving greater trade on the continent. Uh, you can imagine that this has definitely shaped and changed the environment in which trading is done across Africa. How do we ensure that we get efficiencies and it, it, it's, it's enough to grow the African continent and we move past any of the sticking points we, we may certainly have at present? Well, the number of points there. I think in terms of ensuring that we capture these benefits, there's a lot of work that's already been done in the various regional economic communities, such as ECOWAS, the EAC, and SADC. And in many of those regional economic communities, there's actually very little tariffs. And so part of the work to be done is the connection uh, across the RECs. So, for example, if you're going from SADC to ECOWAS, yes. to ensure that those tariffs come down. And then within the regional economic communities and um, as well as across them, it's really important that we pay attention to non-tariff barriers. So for example, that we look at the trade logistics and reduce uh, the friction that comes with moving goods uh, from one country to another. The process of going across uh, border posts and um, fulfilling customs procedures and making that easier. And some of the studies show that reductions in the non-tariff barriers, when you combine those with the reductions in tariff barriers, are what will give you the biggest uh, impact. Yeah, and I can imagine then that tariffs themselves must be the one big thing, well, not the only big thing, but certainly one of the things slowing uh, Africa down in terms of growth. Yes, there are. They, yes, they are. And the Continental Free Trade Agreement is actually quite ambitious and in its uh, most um, forward-looking uh, um, aspiration, it envisions that 90% uh, of tariffs across the continent would be eliminated in terms of intra-regional trade. So if we can achieve that, that will be a big, uh, a big boost. Yeah. How far along do you think Africa would be willing to actually get it done? Is there a political will, a, a business will? Uh, and how much of a role are you playing in, in, in ensuring that uh, the task at hand, which is making sure that the African Continental Free Trade Agreement does pull out the, the, the conclusions we hope it does? So I think we are seeing good signs while there's still a lot of work to be done. So the African Union and its member states have committed themselves to a very aggressive uh, uh, process of negotiating some of the and filling in some of the details of the Continental Free Trade Agreement that need to be put in place before it comes into effect in July of 2020. So there are a number of meetings that are ongoing um, later uh, this month in November and in December and meetings that are scheduled for early next year to ratify some of the negotiations that are ongoing. So that's, that's really important. From a private sector perspective, we are starting to engage with the AU as well as um, other players to ensure that the private sector's voice is heard as these negotiations um, uh, uh, occur. Beyond that, yeah. once the negotiations are complete, 
then governments actually have to implement the impact of the, what they've decided. And, you know, we will need to see that implementation occur. Do you find that uh, the, the private sector's voice is being heard in, in, in these negotiations? I mean, thus far, it feels like it's really just been about government ratification and, and making sure that all the governments in Africa sort of uh, take heed of it. I think it's largely been a government-driven process up to this point. I would agree with that. There is now starting to be more uh, private sector consultation. And hopefully that will pick up uh, both as we uh, get into some of the negotiations around the trade in goods, but especially as we get into negotiations around the trade in services. Mm. If then you're part of the conversation and you're trying to obviously increase how much part of the how much uh, you, you play in terms of a role in all of this, how ready are financial institutions like yourselves for the African Continental Free Trade Agreement? I would say we're getting ourselves ready. Yeah. We understand and see that it is a potentially significant opportunity to boost economic growth on the continent and therefore to boost the services that we can provide to our clients. Uh, we still need to better understand and help shape some of the underlying protocols. So it's important for us to, to get into the room or at least submit our comments into the rooms where these decisions are being made. And then we have to do the work to advise our clients as to how best uh, they can um, uh, participate uh, in the uh, uh, trade liberalization and to understand what it means for them. And then finally, we need to make sure we've developed a set of products or services that capitalize and help advance some of what's been agreed. Yeah. Very finally then, just to ask about how do we make sure that the benefits of the Continental Free Trade Agreement aren't just to the bigger economies, your South Africans, your Egypts, uh, you know, your, your Nigerias, your Angolas, even the likes of those. How do we make sure it accrues then to a whole host of the entire African continent, all 54 nations? That's a very important question. And, and, and um, you know, I, I think that will take some time to play out. I think for some of the smaller economies uh, that are actually um, uh, uh, willing to open themselves up, uh, they now have a greater access to markets uh, than they otherwise would. And so for some of those, um, it could actually be beneficial even in the short run. However, for economies that are not very uh, diversified, ones that are, for example, heavily dependent on agricultural products, um, it could actually be um, more of a disruption. Yeah. But in the long run, um, we think it will be beneficial for the whole continent. And I think it will be a dynamic process for national economies as well as for players in those economies to determine where their competitive advantage lies and to use that competitive advantage to make the most of the continent of free trade. Yeah. Victor, thank you so much. As head of uh, uh, corporate and investment banking for the rest of Africa, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Enjoyed right. it. Cheers, cheers. Thank you.